Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Rebecca and I am the Vegan Pixie Warrior. I'm going to be talking today about the Liberation Pledge and what it's about, what it means to me and why I've taken it. Um, and yeah, hopefully you'll find it encouraging if it's something that you've been thinking about or something you're curious about but won't, you know, aren't sure whether to take the leap. So I'll just explain how the Liberation Pledge was inspired first of all. So it is based on something that happened in China. So around 10,000 BC in China, they started binding women's feet to make them small because it was deemed desirable and attractive to have small feet. And obviously you can imagine this is a very painful thing to go through. I wouldn't know, but I can only imagine that it would be incredibly uncomfortable and incredibly painful. They tried for years to try and stop it and undo it and not make it the norm and nothing worked until one day they decided that they were going to stop binding their daughter's feet and they were going to stop their sons from marrying women that had bound feet. And this worked and just over a hundred years ago, it became the norm not to have bound feet. It became accepted that it you know wasn't attractive and it, it wasn't part of their culture anymore and it didn't need to be part of their culture anymore so the liberation pledge is very similar to that in that <coughs> it's trying not to normalize um eating animals and consuming animals anymore even though veganism is a lot more than just food so the pledge there are three parts to the pledge to take so the first one is to go vegan the second one is to refuse to sit at a table where animals are being consumed and the third is to encourage and inspire other people to take the pledge so that's the point of my video is I'm hoping to help people out and help them decide if it's for them or not and whether it will fit into their lives so in future videos I'll be talking about experiences that I've had, negative and positive. I'll also be speaking to other people that have taken the pledge and I will do future videos about different forms of activism as well to try and inspire more activism. And the Liberation Pledge is definitely a form of activism. So I have been vegan since 2017, August and I have become an animal rights activist uh, in September 2018, starting with street activism at uh, Cuba Truth in Bristol, my hometown, and I'm now an organiser of the Bristol chapter, and that was the following November after I started doing Cube, so literally a couple of months into it, I became an organiser. I also organised the Animal Rights March, for Bristol. I have a great team that I work with. Um, and last year was our was my first march that I'd organised, which was brilliant and went great. I've also attended vigils, so pig vigils and cow vigils. With all of this in mind, the reason I'm telling you this is to try and give you some background as to why I took the pledge. When you're at a Cuba Truth and you're watching the footage with the bystander, it's upsetting watching it over and over and over again and it doesn't get easier at all. But what it does is it fuels me to be able to speak up for them and gives me the knowledge by watching the videos what happens so I know what I'm talking about when I'm talking to the public. And also going to pig vigils and, and cow vigils and knowing what's coming on the other side of those gates when the truck carries on past after you've said some kind words to them and taken some footage and just, you know, given them some positivity before what horrific things are going to happen to them behind the gates. And you know, because you've watched the footage, you know what's going to happen. So it's constantly in your mind. So what I found was that the more I was becoming an animal rights activist and the more activism I was doing and the more things I was seeing and watching and exposing myself to, the more I was finding it difficult to have food with people that were not vegan. 
So that's not to say I didn't want to spend time with them, but I needed to find a way that I could enjoy their time um, when having food with them and having meals or going round to their house um, without upsetting myself. I was coming away from birthday meals and meals with my parents and my in-laws upset and, and devastated and crying to my husband and angry and frustrated. And, and it was just kind of tarnishing my time with my family which and my friends, which should be special and should be celebrated. Um, and I can't avoid them forever. So there's, I needed a way around this. And Christmas 2018 was particularly hard for me. It was my second vegan Christmas and I cooked all the food the day before, like I had the previous year. Um, so it took the pressure off our families and they'd have to cook a vegan roast or a nut roast or, you know, do a pulled jackfruit roast or, you know, make us Yorkshire puddings and vegan gravy and all of the elements that you just don't think about as a meat eater. So I cooked all the food and took it over to my mum and my stepfather's and my husband was at his parents' house and Christmas day we're there and I'm, I'm getting all my food out of the packaging that I've made and I've made enough Yorkshire puddings for the whole family to have so there's loads and everyone can try them um, and I made enough stuffing and far too much nut roast but I knew no one would have my nut roast but no one tried my Yorkshire puddings, no one tried my stuffing and it was just heartbreaking that no one would even try. It was kind of a snub to my, you know, not just my cooking, but a snub to me and my beliefs. Um, and then watching my stepfather carving to the turkey, knowing that this bird had been born only a few months before <clears throat> and knowing what terrible life it had. <clears throat> It was, it was difficult. It was upsetting and difficult and it's Christmas day. So I don't want to cause a fuss. So I'm like trying to keep a, a, a lid on my feelings. And I'm very, anyone that knows me knows how outspoken I am and how I kind of don't think before I speak and just say things. So to be quite controlled in, in that situation was good for me, but also suppressing a lot of feelings is difficult. I suggested um, to kind of put a positive spin on it all that next time my husband's brothers are over from abroad for Christmas we should hire a big house and everyone can come over and me and my husband Dan can cook and no one else have to cook we can just relax and we'll do all the cooking it'll be 100% plant-based Christmas the response I got was it's not Christmas without turkey on the table um, which is upsetting they'd rather have dead bodies on the table than me sat around the table it says a lot for you know how much your your family and friends have that disconnect with with animals and that the the turkey's more important to have on the table than your daughter around the table that's that's hard that's upsetting and that's hard to listen to um so my husband turned up the next day to pick me up and me and my mum had had a discussion that morning about veganism where she was asking me questions, which I thought was great. And I was trying to answer them with all the tools I'd learned from doing outreach at Cubes, but it just turned into an argument because she was interrupting me or laughing at me or thinking that that was extreme. So I got really upset and really angry. So when my husband turned up, I said, come on, let's just go. I don't want to stop. I just, I just want to get home. I've, had the worst Christmas had in ages it was just heartbreaking and horrible heartbreaking because I couldn't enjoy time with my family because I found it too upsetting heartbreaking because they didn't understand where I was coming from and they didn't respect that or respect my views and they turned it into me being extreme um and heartbreaking because I had to watch innocent animals being cut up in front of me and that that was hard it's difficult um it was a while before i started thinking more about the liberation pledge again um i kind of had this impression in my head that with the liberation pledge it meant that you only ate at vegan restaurants and i thought well how can you create create the demand 
uh, for veganism if you're only eating in vegan restaurants, which I 100% support vegan establishments. But I also like Wagamama's and Pho and the Cozy Club and, and places like that, you know? So I, I, that's why I had it in my mind that I didn't want to take the pledge because it was important to me to create this demand and we're not going to get a change in this world if there aren't options available wherever you go. Um, I find it, it would be too restrictive if, if we couldn't go to these chains and these other places, maybe independents that don't, aren't 100% vegan but have a vegan option. So that's how I had it in my head. And then I went to the Animal Rights March in August last year in London. And I stayed with another activist and I noticed he had a bracelet on, a fork bracelet. So I asked him about it and he told me it was a liberation pledge. He told me why he'd taken it. And everything he was saying just struck a chord with me. I felt, I felt uncomfortable. I felt anxious. I felt like I was condoning people eating animals, but then on the other hand, going to the streets and telling people not to. I felt like I was contradicting myself. Um, so after talking to Mark and he made it sound so easy to do and he talked about how he'd integrated into his work life and experiences that he'd had and I was like well you know I could make this work I could do this and I felt like I had to do it for my emotional state and I had to do it for the animals as well so then in September I did it I took the pledge and I told my family and I told my friends and some reactions were great and some were not so great so one was I said to one of my family members that had recently got a dog if I was to invite you over to my house and cook your dog and feed your dog how would you feel about it obviously you can imagine their reaction was they wouldn't like it and they, it would upset them and I said well that's that's how I feel when we go for food together and you're eating animals I feel I, I see the violence I see the innocent being I see the pig that could have been free on a sanctuary I I see the gas chambers I see the abattoirs I I that's what I see when you're eating meat in front of me it's not just a meal and I can't enjoy my food I also can't enjoy your company because I feel uncomfortable and I feel anxious and upset and angry and heartbroken and all these negative emotions that I don't want to feel when I'm with my family and friends. I, I want to feel happy to see them. I want to look forward to these experiences because they're, they're memories to build. But if those memories are based on violence and torture, then I can never get past that. I can never enjoy or look back at that memory. Like looking back to that Christmas, I don't look at it with any happiness or joy. I look at it with pain and sadness. Um, some of my family have been great and some of my, fa my friends have been amazing. And in future videos, I will do individual videos on my experiences. So positive and negative, because I want to be honest, because sometimes it's not easy doing the liberation pledge, but sometimes it is. And one thing you have to remember is that if people say they're not going to honor your, your pledge and they won't, they won't eat a vegan meal with you, they're not excluding themselves, they're excluding you. Like I said earlier, they'd rather have animals on the table than you round the table. And the liberation pledge is not about excluding others. You're not excluding them. You're saying, I want to spend time with you. I'm just asking that you change what's on your plate. That's it. You get rid of the violence from your plate. That's all it is. What also I found from taking the pledge is that it's been a lot easier to talk about animal rights um, and animal liberation when there's not animals on the table. Because as soon as someone's, you know, tucking into that chicken wing and you start talking about what happened to the chickens and how old they are and the conditions they're kept in and 
how they're killed and all of these things, it puts a barrier up to that person straight away because they're trying to tuck into their food and they don't want to hear it. They're like, I, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Whereas if they've got plants on their plate, it, it's different, but it's kind of encouraged people. It's hard to explain, but I found that my friends and family have asked me more about what happens to the animals rather than shutting it down because of the pledge, because we're eating plants. And I think as well, they realize, some of them realize that it means a lot to me, my veganism, and, and it's part, a massive part of who I am. And my activism has made me the person I am, you know, in a very short time, it's opened up my world and my confidence. And they get it and they, the, the few that do get it realize that this means something and this is actually really important to me. And, you know, Rebecca's genuinely, you know, upset by what happens to the animals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put a link on the bottom of this video, on the description of the video um, for the Liberation Pledge website. So you can go and have a look. There's loads of tips and advice on there. There's a Facebook page for support as well. So you can ask any questions. Um, I'm also going to link um, to the Etsy shop where if you wanted to, if you take the pledge and you want to, you can purchase one of these bracelets. And I'm going to put a link to my Patreon site. So if you want to support me so I can carry on doing these videos, then please do. Don't forget to click subscribe and click share. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.